Americans. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kate, Mrs. Mayor, would you please call the roll? I would be happy to. Kate Mayor, I am here. Tim Medeker. Here. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap is excused, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. um, Tom Cruise. Here. Alex Ockrey. He is excused. Thank you. Cheryl Hancock. She is excused. Thank you. And Anita. Here. Zekosinski. Here. Okay, with, oh, well, let's see. Four, four of this, five. five of, I'm sorry, I'm counting Alex. Five of the seven board members present, I would declare a quorum. Um, you would note the board norms um, reflection in your folder. Are there any comments? Just a reminder that we go by the board norms. Um, and then approval of agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I would so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Kate has motioned. Lisa has seconded to approve the agenda as published. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion to approve the published agenda has passed. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We would note that a five-minute time limit per five-minute time limit per person be followed. Anyone? All right. Moving along to recognition and thank you. Uh, Best Buy for Business Donors Choose Program, Dr. Carlson. I'd like to recognize this evening again Best Buy and their Donors Choose Program, which recently donated. A uh, total of about $896, which I believe is going to be used or has been used to purchase two, some iPads for Prairie View um, for at the kindergarten level. So again, thank you to Best Buy. Okay, thank you. Um, and then District Administrator's report. I have nothing <laughs> further to add unless you have questions with uh, from the happenings reports and the liaison um, report as well. Anyone? Comments? I spent a lot of time reading those reports and it was really, um, there were a lot of things that kind of stuck out to me, but especially the food collections. I was amazed at some of the collections and donations and the amount of change. And I like how it was termed change because I just pictured all the kids coming to school and doing, you know, the Miracle Minute. Yeah, that was really neat. So very, very proud. A lot of cool things going on in our district. So thank you all to the you leadership know, team. Now that, now that you bring that up, I'll jump in. But I love reading um, our administration. You put together the happenings. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's like my favorite thing to read when I it, <laughs> study for school too. board because <laughs> it lets me know what's going on. So awards that people have had. And help me here, which school had a team that went to a competition with 53 Viking and the competition was for what yeah right and I know there's not a microphone but at Viking so out of 53 different competitions for tag your team won Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And that's, that's one piece. But then every single other school had donations. Um, the part that will never be tested by a state, but we are taking care of, is that our kids are learning how to serve their community and how to give back. And I thank our administrators for their role in that and the teachers and mm -hmm. whoever sponsors clubs and everything else. It's a good thing. I thought that too when I read the comments about, I, I, I don't know if was it the middle school, Mr. Vogler, the kids who went to the Salvation Army yes. and helped at the Salvation Army. I, that was really, really impressive. I think that, that I was thinking even logistically to coordinate that and get kids down to the Salvation Army and have them, have them see what it's like to help others and help them realize how fortunate they are. So thank you. A lot of education and it doesn't all happen within the school buildings so um, thank you for all you do 
and then we have reports and discussion. Uh, limited term education assistant at Viking, Dr. Carlson or Julie Krakow. And as Julie makes her way up, this item is one of those rare occasions where because of the um, timely need that Julie will reiterate on a kiddo that we have included this item on the consent agenda this evening. But Julie will just make a few comments specifically about what we're asking of the board. So oh, good evening. Um, today um, in your packet you have an issue paper um, for an educational assistant, a limited term person, five hours a day, to address a significant need of one student at Viking Elementary. The limited term will just be from now until the end of the school year. Um, this is uh, an issue that has come up kind of suddenly, and so it is kind of urgent, and that's why we're asking that um, it be approved tonight so we can get the person hired and um, get that support for the student. Any questions you might have for me? Anyone? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 2015-16 uh, school year <coughs> calendar draft, Dr. Carlson. I've included that in your board packet. Um, I've, in different ways, have communicated and talked about our process in putting out a calendar for the coming school year. I'd be happy to take any questions that you may have, but to simply summarize, the proposed calendar is very comparable to this year. And uh, the same days, um, the, the, the placement of the end of the quarters, very similar. Um, probably one of the only changes compared to this year is if you look at December 23rd, um, there, there would not be school. So looking ahead in a year, we would have school on Monday and Tuesday, the 21st and 22nd, but not the 23rd. And part of that is so that you look at the layout of the rest of the year as a whole and to make the terms as even as possible and that we can, um, that, that helped in that. So there isn't any significant change. <clears throat> we, um, you may recall I did survey, I put a question about um, the idea of maybe inserting a day in October, inserting a day of no school in February. Um, where we would then add on at the end of the year and uh, combined uh, surveying staff, our employees as well as parents, I'm just not comfortable in making that recommendation at this time, but perhaps in a future year um, there would want to be con more consideration and further, further examination of that. So with that, I'd be happy to take questions and if necessary, I would be able to put that up um, to s for everybody to see as well. Questions, and this would be on the the next board meeting for consent. Okay. N no questions, and and obviously with this calendar starting in <clears throat> September of 15 would be way too soon for any major changes. But as long as I have been on this board, I need to stay consistent and continue. You're smiling. Um, continue my call to explore a year-round school calendar. Um, I know there are hurdles to it, but I, I certainly hear great things with student learning in the schools that are going to that, especially some to the south. And uh, as a board, I think we need to challenge the status quo uh, to help improve student learning. So um, I know you're smiling. You knew I was probably going to say that tonight. I think you've heard that every year for uh, the years that you've been here, but uh, just get that plug in there for year-round schooling question too I know there is there is some summer schools and isn't there some some school in the summertime that kids do or I mean, yes is it correct. all mandatory or is it voluntary or I mean what is that growing I mean I I, I agree with Tim I, I've I agree with him on the on, on the changing calendar so we don't have skill set loss or try to mim minimize that as much as possible but I was just was curious you know are we making any steps that way I mean is it a is it popular or I'm just curious sure and we will be I believe in February is when we come to the board and do a presentation on what we're looking at for the coming summer school program but to just uh, <clears throat> a few responses mr. Cruz um, it is not mandatory at all levels although at various levels we strongly encourage um, parents both elementary and then if you look at our high school for example 
We'll have students, it's a variety, we'll have students who will enroll in classes because perhaps they were not successful and they need to get back up with that credit status. But, but that's not, we also have students that are looking ahead and may, may take some courses in the summer at the high school so that they have room in their schedule during the regular year to fit additional courses in. And so um, it's a variety of reasons why our students take it. I think that um, we continue are looking at how we can grow and enhance our program. If you look at the last oh, few years at the elementary level, um, we've had some increase, um, and, uh, but we're continually looking at that but it is not mandatory. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? I'm just gonna jump in with the WASB resolutions um, in the past two years, and I would encourage us to look at them because what Tim and Tom just said, there have been proposals year after year after year for our lobbyists for Wisconsin School Board Association to support year-round schooling. And what stops that is a law that's still in place about which school districts can start earlier. Really? It, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of convoluted. Dr. Carlson knows a lot more than this, but there are some boundaries that, that we have, <laughs> even if we wanted to do it until certain laws are changed. And we're trying to get, I know, I know you've been part of a, was it four different districts, five different districts that tried to present a resolution to the state to say, please let us experiment with this? And the answer has been no. And year after year after year, we keep trying to get this solved. And so, yes, research, a lot of research supports what you're saying. And yet, our state laws keep us fun trying to do some of that so and if I said something wrong Dr. Carlson because you know no. so much more than I do but and, and not to get further into the expanded school year or the year round but if you just look at the calendar that's presented for your consideration tonight the first day of school is on September 1 and it's a Tuesday and um, the question I've gotten from folks is why can't we start at least on Monday August 31 <laughs> And um, that's not, again, permitted. Yeah. So that's just, again, that's not um, an example or a question related to uh, year round, but um, it goes to the notion of what the state statute currently is. It and really what does. It and, and what a school board would like to do. You yeah. Know. yeah. Yeah. So, so there are issues, but, but I, I guess my bottom line is stay informed with WASB, look at those resolutions. Um, on the WASB website, there are places, um, this is for the public too, um, for your people that you want to talk to. If this is a big issue for you, let them know. Email them. Give them a message. Good points. Thank you. Thank you. So let me know between now and the next board meeting if you have further questions. Be happy to respond. Okay. Thank you. Uh, referendum questions, first draft. Jay Clark. So you have both of us up here not just Mr. Clark, but uh, we've been working on this presentation and, and um, some of this is going to be information that you've already seen, um, but tonight we want to present you with information that we hope that helps, continues to help the board in making a decision regarding whether to move towards a referendum uh, this school year, specific to April. Information referenced in this presentation, in this PowerPoint, uh, really comes from the other document that is included, the, that draft Q&A. So again, there's nothing that you're going to find in this PowerPoint, really, that's not in that document. Um, 
And I believe, just for your note taking, we've provided you with a paper copy um, of this presentation as well. When I've had an opportunity to talk about whether that it was that fiscal sustainability goal or tonight, again, I will continue to say that everything we do begins here with our vision. We, when we look at our mission, we are educating and inspiring students every day. We've committed ourselves to developing 21st century learning skills in our students, including innovation, creativity, communication, critical thinking, computer literacy, and others. So tonight, we will outline information that will assist the board in making a decision regarding a potential referendum no later than January 26, 70 days prior to general election date of April 7th, the board will need to determine and take action if an April 7th, 2015 referendum will be presented to the public. And if so, what will it include? At the December, 20, at the December 8th board meeting, the board approved a goal to increase revenue per pupil up to $263, or an equivalent of approximately $990,000 990, by 2019. The additional revenue is proposed to be generated by a referendum question presented to the public at the April 7th general election. The referendum would ask for authority to exceed the state revenue limit for the purpose of funding operational expenses. Operational expenses including the areas of technology, facility maintenance, and our fleet replacement within our transportation department. So referendum question one that's being presented focuses on funding technology for students and instructional staff specifically creating a digital learning environment for middle school and high school students. While a final draft of this referendum question will need to be prepared and is continually being looked at by legal counsel, an early draft of this referent, referendum question is presented. What's on the screen, uh, you'll see that it's not necessarily all complete, but it really states that shall the school district of Holman Board of Education be authorized to exceed the revenue limit specified in section 121.91 Wisconsin statutes in the amount of $655,000 in each year from the 2015-16 school year through the 2018-19 school year for purposes of implementing one-to-one -one wireless mobile device technology at Holman Middle School and Holman High School. The referendum question seeking additional dollars for technology is intended to create student learning environment that promotes digital learning. The district will focus on the following items to create this environment. The one-to-one -one mobile devices for all middle school and high school students and instructional staff, the purchase of those. Making sure we have the wireless network capacity infrastructure in both buildings to support those devices. And I want to say that due to the board's leadership in that over the last two years, we have put ourselves in a good position with our infrastructure. But we also know to take this step, especially making sure that in those high density learning areas uh, where we have students that may be on at the same time, we do have to expand our infrastructure further. Staff development to integrate mobile devices into instruction and learning. The technology support staff necessary to ensure reliability of devices and the related infrastructure. And the technology hardware and or software needed to support the device implementation in the classroom. So why the focus on the devices? There's no question that uh, we are playing, in a sense, catch up we have not introduced our students to some of the contemporary technology that will best position them for after high school as they enter their 
uh, career or being college ready. While our students have done well with standardized academic testing, again, looking at not only present day and their learning in the classroom and utilizing it as a tool, but the real life and post-secondary success will require the integration of the technology with their learning and intellect. One-to-one -one mobile devices are a tool that promotes personalized instructional learning in the classroom. Access to mobile devices also provides the opportunity to extend and enrich school-based learning at home. Furnishing each student a device ensures equity for all students, regardless of each family's ability to afford technology. And along that same lines, district furnished devices also eliminates variability associated with allowing each student to bring their own device, which I know the board in the past has had uh, much discussion about. Moving to referendum or potential referendum question two focuses on funding for the proper maintenance and ongoing repair of district facilities and continuing the cost efficient and safe transportation of students to and from school. Again, as question one, uh, while this isn't a final draft, it's a beginning draft as we look at continually even having legal counsel review as well. Shall the school district of Holman Board of Education be authorized to exceed the revenue limit specified in section 121.91 Wisconsin statutes in the amount of $335,000 for the 2016-17 school year and thereafter for the recurring purpose of ongoing school district building maintenance and ongoing replacement of school vehicles. <clears throat> so why the money for maintenance and fleet replacement? Again, when facing budget decisions where needs exceed available resources, the district's first priority has been the immediate needs of our students. This focus contributed, contributed to insufficient dollars being available to address technology advancements, but also long-term facility maintenance and transportation fleet replacement. Continued lower level of spending in the areas of facility maintenance and transportation fleet replacement will only create greater operational costs in the long run. For example, you've heard this, we've, we've said this before, how we believe that each dollar of preventative maintenance missed will ultimately cost $4 in deferred maintenance and repair in the future. So simply stated, if we don't have $1 to put toward maintaining facilities today, how would we come up with the $4 needed to accomplish the same thing in the future? The same holds true for fleet replacement. We all know that at some point a vehicle starts to nickel and dime us to death. The school board, administration, and staff look for the most efficient way to do business as an ongoing activity. We all are making decisions in an effort to get the most out of the limited resources available. An example of data that verifies the effectiveness of our efforts to be efficient includes our facility maintenance, operations costs, and pupil transportation costs. The most recent data shows that Holman's facilities maintenance operations spending per square foot of facility space is about 79% of similar sized districts in West Central Wisconsin in our region. In the area of pupil transportation, our cost per pupil mile is about 73% of those same districts. These comparatively low costs combined with quality service substantiate the reality that there is little room for additional efficiency. In many ways, this examination suggests lower cost is not sustainable because deferred maintenance in our aging fleet will eventually lead to very inefficient operations. So there are two separate questions because state law will not allow the questions to be combined. State law prohibits combining the questions because of different provisions in each of the questions. As I stated with question one, the digital learning technology, 
seeks public approval to generate a fixed amount of new revenue each year over a fixed number of years. In other words, non-recurring. Whereas question two regarding the facility maintenance and fleet replacement seeks public approval to generate a fixed annual amount of new revenue on a recurring annual basis. In addition, availability of the referendum approved dollars starts at different times. The dollars designated to fund the potential question one on technology would begin in 2015-16, while dollars designated to fund the second question related to the ongoing or recurring expense for facility maintenance and fleet replacement would begin in 2016-17. So that allows then uh, to, for us to achieve, for our district to achieve this goal of not increasing, having a net increase in property taxes. So why a referendum? Again, referendum funding of unfunded and underfunded needs has been suggested periodically for years. There has been reluctance to approach the community seeking this funding because the school board has wished to practice the highest level of stewardship with the resources provided. Also, there has always been a sense of optimism that the opportunity to address these needs is just around the corner. When faced with the fiscal realities, the school board took action in 2013, a year ago, to develop a focus area related to fiscal sustainability as part of our district's strategic plan. And the focus area developed, that focus area developed into the following statement that by June 2019, increased revenue per pupil $263 as measured by the budget of revenue divided by the current pupil membership. And again, the board had taken action two weeks ago. The task of determining the best alternative to generate the revenue described utilized previously recognized and similar work by the school board. A 2013 study and report on funding options for facilities, you may recall that, maintenance included a criteria-based method of rating funding options. So the criteria included effective use of resources, fiscal sustainability, resource flexibility to meet needs, impact on taxpayers, public engagement in relations, and net resources gained. Applying this rating methodology to the fiscal sustainability focus area goal resulted in the conclusion that referendum funding was the most appropriate option to generate that goal which you approved two weeks ago of increasing the revenue per pupil. So questions one and two combined result in revenue increases ranging from $335,000 to $990,000 per year. And again, when divided by that membership of approximately 3,800 pupils, that's where that range that we reported out two weeks ago of $88 to $263 per pupil is generated. The amount of money, $990,000, would be unattainable by other revenue generation methods at this time. The revenue stream needs to be as predictable and dependable as the items that are being proposed for funding. So here you have a table that outlines for you kind of the, uh, the implement implementation plan um, should you decide to move forward a referendum and if it was successful. So you can see going across the top, the years, the first four years, 2015 through 2018-19, you'll see that the digital learning where you have the $655,000 consistently each of those four years. And then in the next year of 2016-17, you'll see the startup 
of the ongoing or recurring expense for facility maintenance and fleet transportation replacement. And so that's where, when you start adding, that's where the $990,000 combined occur. We did add a fifth year here, 2019-20, just to show the ending at this point of the technology, those four years. But I would want to note, and we've made, we've made this statement before, that just because this is ending, we don't want anybody to believe that our commitment and our interest and our belief in technology will end. Again, but at this point, um, that, that particular referendum question and funding would end at that point, and then we would have the decision to make as a district of how we would proceed and move forward with technology. Whereas facility maintenance and fleet replacement would be ongoing. I'm going to ask Mr. Clark to try to work us through this, <clears throat> this slide at this point and talking about trying to lead us to a better understanding on the no net <clears throat> increase. I've had, excuse me, I've asked Board Treasurer, Treasurer Lisa Collins to pass down, have you passed, would you please pass down the, that's sometimes hard to see, um, and I know the audience members have also received a copy of this. So this table breaks down the tax impact of the referenda questions, illustrating how do you achieve this no ta net tax increase over the course of the referenda questions. And the best way to present the potential impact is to, first of all, understand the tax rate concept. Uh, the tax rate can then be applied to properties of various values to estimate the impact on any specific property. And so typically the tax rate is represented in taxes per $100,000 worth of property. And so that's the heading that you see at the top of the table. Net tax per 100,000 property value slash the tax bill amount on a $100,000 property. And so then you can see, and let's work across with the digital learning technology. As we just saw, a $655,000 revenue generation amount in the first year that would be raised by taxes, the tax rate on that $655,000 would be 46 well, 46 cents per the 01 also, uh, 46 cents per $100,000 of property, or $46 on a $100,000 property. Double that if the property value was $200,000. And then continuing with that same role, moving under the 2016 17 fiscal year column, you see the amount is dropped. And the drop is one of the events that leads to a no net tax increase. And that has to do with state aid. That those dollars raised and then spent would result in two thirds, pardon me, one third funding by the state of Wisconsin. And so the 655,000 that had to be raised by property taxes in the first year is reduced by that one third funding because it comes the year after reduced by that one-third funding in the second year, so it's down to a little over 30 cents, or $30.68 on a $100,000 property. And then that continues, because again, you're spending the money you raised in taxes the prior year in each of the subsequent years. Moving on then to row two, or question number two, the facility maintenance and fleet replacement. You see again, it's not, there was no additional money uh, generated in 1516, so you move to the 1617 column, and it's a uh, little over 23 cents per $100,000 of property, or $23.53 on a $100,000 home. And again, then that state aid effect, you'd expect that to come again, it comes again, and so it's down to $15, and is that 59 cents? 69 cents, it is small. And then that continues on, even through 1920, and it would continue on beyond that. 
These, I should mention, are subject to changes in the equalized valuation of the community. For the purposes of simplification and taking a complex concept, I've assumed in all these models that the equalized valuation of the community remains the same. The practical reality is the community's equalized valuation will probably continue to go up, and these rates will be smaller. But that just adds another variable I don't want to have to talk about at this point in time. This is kind of a um, least, less likely scenario. The like, dollars are likely to be less. And then, then the next shaded line is the combined impact of both questions. But this is going to have a net zero effect, so we need to talk about the next two rows. Uh, first item is long-term debt defeasance. And this represents dollars that have accumulated in a district account designated exclusively or payment of facility construction costs are debt. The accumulated amount represents interest that's been earned on these funds over years, as well as debt defeasance amounts, amounts levied, approved by the board, specifically for paying off future debt. And this has occurred over the last several years. This combined accumulated balance may only be used to make payments on debt. By strategically timing the years this accumulated balance is used to make debt payments, we can avoid the need to use property taxes in those same years. So we use this debt defeasance amount rather than current taxes in that year to meet our debt obligation. The avoided debt tax in these years will be replaced by the digital learning referendum levy in 2015-16 and 16-17, thereby creating a net zero tax impact in association with that referendum question. And so you can see a corresponding in red parentheses minus amount for long-term debt defeasance reduction. We're using that strategy in 2015-16 and in 2016-17 to offset the equal amount um, associated with the digital learning technology. And then the next <coughs> row, long-term debt reduction. Long-term debt reduction is on a horizon. The district annually collects local school property tax to pay off long-term debt. The long-term debt associated with the 1998 construction those of you who've been around remember Sand Lake Elementary School and also on the referendum at that time was Empire Stadium work completing and that will be paid off in 2016 and uh, this is kind of like the final payment on your home mortgage and while they'll be continuing long-term debt for other um, school construction projects projects such as Prairie View and the building you sit in here today um, this will be the end of the Sand Lake Elementary School and Empire Stadium debt and that results in a reduction in the debt levy in 2016-17. And by strategically placing then the introduction of the second two years of the levy for digital learning, that is 17-18 and 18-19, as well as the facility maintenance and fleet replacement, at the precise time the long-term debt tax levy is expiring, we can achieve the net zero result in taxes and so it was important to us as administratively as we were coming forward with a recommendation to try to do everything we could to uh, eliminate the tax impact and so you can see zeros across the bottom line there you yeah, have something going on with uh, Uh, I'll be careful here. I'm likely yeah, to turn the whole thing off. That'd be the worst, <laughs> worst yet than not being able to see this. For the audience, uh, again, that bottom row continues to be the zeros as well as for the board. <clears throat> Are there any questions on that? That's, I know it's finance and finance isn't as glamorous as one-to-one -one devices, but to the taxpayers is really important. We can come back to any of the slides uh, for questions. We could move on here. So what has been done, completed activities back on the 8th, again, the board approved the goal 
of uh, increase in the revenue per pupil. There's been presentations, information shared on that same date of the 8th with facility committee, but then also on the 15th with the finance committee, and this was uh, Mr. Clark and I had an opportunity to give a presentation to the technology committee last week as well. <clears throat> Things coming up, suggested activities and timelines. I had mentioned uh, previously we continue to have review by legal counsel on proposed qu uh, questions for your consideration. And then tonight, this is just the first official look at some draft questions for the board. We are looking at a board workshop on this, just on this topic, just on uh, the discussion about a potential referendum for January 8th and then looking ahead to January 26th that would that would be the latest time uh, that the board as far as making the decision to move forward for the April election that you would need to do and then looking at April 7th and if the board chose to move forward um, with the uh, moving this to the public, our community for consideration, there would be a number of things that obviously would have to occur between January 26th and April 7th to help educate, to help share information with our community so that they can make a decision. So some thoughts prior to that workshop on January 8th for, for board members to continue to review that Q&A, that draft Q&A. Again, that goes into much more detail than what even Jay and I shared with you this evening. Let us know how we can help and respond to questions. And quite honestly, the questions that you've already asked of us at the last two board meetings have helped continually building that Q&A. And we so much appreciate that. And then uh, just continue to prepare your thoughts and concerns, ideas for that time. So we started out with our presentation looking at a goal of um, preparing you to um, no later than January 26th to determine if an April 7th referendum would be presented to the public or will be. And that if yes, what will be included in that referendum? So with that, questions, requests for information, leave it open to the board. This is that first look, and uh, again, we would be coming back depending on your direction and where you're at. Uh, more uh, presentation of information at the next board meeting, as well as that following one, where at that point the decision would have to be made. But also we have that special workshop on the 8th as well. Just, I, I just want to acknowledge who helped put this draft together because I read it this afternoon a couple of times and just so impressed and so grateful for what you've put together both for us and the public. They'll see it eventually. So I know the two of you did. Are there other names yeah, that more than that? Our, our entire administ entire administrative staff um, has gone through this front to back. Um, and provided uh, valuable input. And then um, in no small measure, as Dr. Carlson said, the input that the board members, uh, the thoughts that you share um, represent the community and uh, right away made it into. Uh, and we read things in the newspaper too and thought, oh, there's a good point for clarification. Well, I thank you all. Um, it really helps me and I need to reread it and reread it. And I'm, I'm too appreciative of all the questions that my fellow board members brought up because um, it's a big thing and yet I'm really proud of how our district has <clears throat> has had an impact upon the taxpayers that is minimal we have such a good history of that and and you've embraced that again um, and yet still putting out the needs that <clears throat> we have that are catching up with us so thank you for everything you put together A quick question and two comments. Sure. Uh, the quick question, and, and certainly don't expect an answer tonight, maybe by that January 8th, 
is what if any costs are associated with a referendum as far as cost to the district for that and but thank you and um, then the the two comments the first is just want to echo what Kate said about uh, thank you for all the information that has been provided um, certainly it's uh, I think beneficial to everyone to get that information uh, the other comment that I want to make is um, I, really for the past six or seven years uh, I personally every time I've attended a special meeting have not accepted um, any money for that it's just kind of something that I've done I've not publicized that fact it's it's been very little known as we have a special meeting come up here on the 8th to ask the public for more money I would like to challenge my fellow board members to consider doing that for that meeting as well So our goal now is to look over your draft, um, read it thoroughly, come up with questions, comments, request information ahead of time, and then our workshop on the 8th is when we will be going over this again, and then our meeting on the 12th, we will be discussing this again, our regular board meeting on yeah, the 12th. Of course, the 8th is key. Yep. yep. That's, That's where this will be the only item. Right. Um, on that, and, but you're correct. And then at the regular meeting on the 12th, um, you know, the 8th is on a Thursday. And so uh, we will have already kind of put the packet together. And But yet there needs to be some amending <laughs> to do because if you work on that Thursday, the 8th, again, you as a board certainly can do that. And um, depending on your progress at that point. Right. And then discussion. Uh, trying to narrow down so to help you with ultimately making that decision it's kind of twofold do you want to move forward in advancing a referendum to our community and then if so that's where mm -hmm. refining those questions and making sure you're comfortable with what's included thank you all right Uh, consent agenda items. Let's see. <clears throat> Are there any agenda items on the consent agenda that anyone would like considered separately? No? All right. I would entertain a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. My motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Tom, motion, please have seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Consent agenda items have passed. Boy, that's fast. Uh, board member reports and discussion. I will call upon board members in the order of roll call and ask you to present any comments or committee reports you may have. Um, Kate Mayer. Yeah, just a, a comment about um, Student Achievement and Learning Committee. We are asking for a, a one-year extension of the last class size figures that we approved a year ago. And with that said, we understand um, it may need to come onto the agenda eventually. We'll take care of that. But the reason for this is we are wanting to contact um, and get input from all of our staff, from administration and from teachers to make sure that we are embracing what people are feeling. And we really aren't sure at this point. There are very few of us on this committee. And we wanna make sure that if we're asking for something, there truly is a concern. And so that's the reason we're doing that. So I wanted to give you a heads up with that. The other reason to to just ask for this is is that um, we need to get started on assembling our classes and get that done. That's coming up very quickly, um, probably more quickly than we realize it has to be done. Um, so with that said, you know, Dr. Carlson, if you want to add anything to what I just said of what the proper protocol would be with that, um, please feel free to do that. We'll just work with, I'll ultimately work with President Hancock, Cheryl, and, and when we plan the upcoming agenda and, and, and visit with you, Ms. Mayor, and, and potentially I could foresee putting an action item on an upcoming agenda for the board to 
um, look at the action you took last spring related to which was viewed to be more, uh, I believe the message was more for that staffing purpose at that time. And then as the SOC committee takes a look at the entire policy, how that may be impacted. And so if we need to take that initial step temporarily, we can do that. So I'll work with uh, Mrs. Hancock and Mrs. Mayor and, and go from there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Tim Mettinger. Uh, just a couple of quick comments. Uh, first off, um, I recently, a couple of weeks ago, attended the uh, uh, Public Service Commission meeting for the lines uh, that were being proposed. I um, wanted to also thank uh, Principal Tronstad, uh, Mr. Clark. I believe Mr. Daly was there as well. I know uh, Alex Acre was there also. Um, so certainly uh, thanks to those. Uh, it's a good crowd there. Uh, the question, as always, is were the ears opened by the <laughs> members of the Public Service Commission? Um, but uh, I think a good show of support. Uh, my concern then is still is is the divide and conquer. Um, you know, everybody wanted, uh, you know, they divide the group uh, because everybody's got their own opinion because nobody wants it their direction. But um, hopefully we can continue to stay unified, and that was the approach that I kind of took when, when I spoke to them. Um, and then the last thing I just want to mention is just uh, hope everyone has a great winter break. Uh, enjoy the time off, and uh, wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Collins. From the Finance Committee perspective, Jay did a wonderful job of kind of <laughs> talking about some of the things that we talked about at the Finance Committee. I, I actually wasn't able to make the Finance Committee meeting, but nothing to add. Great job. Yeah, I, um, I was. Uh, I, um, we had a long meeting. It was, uh, we saw the uh, the book, this, the uh, buildings and grounds created. On, it's quite extensive on planning for uh, f facility maintenance. I, uh, it was a very, um, as I always say, enlightening for me because it's a constant learning curve in this business. So um, it was helpful for me to get a get a handle on on what. Uh, finances of the schools are and I do think we are good stewards of our money and uh, I did have a long talk with uh, um, one of the community member who's also on the buildings and crowds committee almost 90 minutes we had a long talk on, on um, goals and stuff and it uh, so I think we're uh, I feel better about it since last meeting so anyway thanks. okay so that was kind of a two-in-one so you are you do you have other comments Tom no that was about it okay that's about it thanks. very good okay um, and I just wanted to thank everyone that was involved in the presentation that you and Jay gave on the referendum information. It's always um, it's difficult to make the step to decide to have a referendum because it is a lot of work and we have a short time period but um, when it's necessary like it is um, it's something that you have to do and you realize the the job you have ahead of you but what you guys presented tonight and the information in our packet just a question and answer information everything i thought of in my head that if i knew nothing about our district and someone came up to me and said holman wants to have a referendum every question i was thinking of you had answered in that packet so it was really i was pretty impressed good reading for a sunday afternoon so <laughs> i really appreciated you putting that all together and i know it wasn't just you two i know it was a lot of a lot of other people in the district so um then I also wanted to thank um, the rest of the staff for everything they've done for the kids around the holidays because I know it's um, one big sugar buzz for about the last week <laughs> as I work in a school too. So I just keep the lid on the boiling pot and try to take care of the kids who are climbing out of their skin right now with excitement. But we appreciate everything you do. And um, have a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Um, thank you for all you do, teaching staff, support staff, all of you, and parents. So thank you. That's all I have. And did you have something else to add, Tom? Do you I want just, to say something yeah, else? thanks. Uh, read my mind. Uh, we had talked also in the meeting and the finance committee about uh, educating the public and, I'm, and educating us with the in-service. So I'm looking forward to, uh, I do think it's going to be a, uh, in some respects with the economy and I, I know it's getting better and you can look at it both ways I think we we've got a, a lot of work ahead of us mm -hmm. so 
I just think we should look at it that way. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then also we had correspondence received. We had the thank you notes for um, December 8th, public participation speakers, college board news about Holman being named to the fifth annual AP district honor roll. Uh, we had school board committee written reports and then the school board meeting schedule. January 8th is the special school board workshop. January 12th is a school board meeting. January 21st through the 23rd is the state education convention uh, or school board convention in Milwaukee. Um, and if you haven't registered yet, please get to Christina and let her know that you would like to attend. It's very worthwhile. Uh, January 26th, we have a school board meeting. And February 17th, we have a board workshop with Matthew Fail. That's a tentative date. And then board meeting reflection. Are there any comments? I think we were perfect. I think we did pretty well. We followed all the norms. All right. Any other business that needs to come before the board at this time? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I would so move. Is there a second? A second. Kate motion, Tom second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I would, uh, hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Nay, motion passes. We are adjourned at 7.56.